down in the den. So go tell a friend. The best podcast on earth is about to begin. We got jokes and news and movie reviews. After dark and NC-17 with the crew. Interviews with the best artists around. So like, comment, subscribe. The show's starting right now. Let's go. Like, comment, subscribe. The show's starting right now. We're back! Welcome to season four of Down in the Den, my friends. We are back here to bring you more quality content about the music industry. And I am so proud. I am so ecstatic to introduce our new format, but more importantly, to welcome the first four time season four. So we got the four time, four time, four time guest. It the is fantastic four. The fantastic four, the frightening four, whatever you want to say. We are here, my man, Johnny Raps. Welcome back to the show, brother. How you doing today? What's up, dude? We are the Buzz Brothers. I'm loving it, man. I'm loving the new music. I'm loving the new music. Oh my God, you have so much that's been going on since the last time we're here. So we're going to kick up a little bit about that. But first, let the people know who have not seen our previous three episodes, who have not seen the Unknown Comic Book Podcast, who have not checked out your music. Please tell them a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and how you got into this music industry, because that's what it's all about. Myself and where I'm from and how I got into the music industry. Yes, sir. Three-parter. Myself. Man, my name is Johnny Raps. You can see it right there. See it spelled right there on the screen. And you can look me up. All platforms. You know what I mean? Like, my catalog is available everywhere. I've got a growing catalog. No bullshit. No filler. All bangers. And it's John hyphen E hyphen raps. The hyphens is very, the hyphens is very important. You know what I mean? Very important. Really <laughs> important. Hyphen, it's a totally, totally different person. But I got a pretty good search engine optimization. If you spell that shit right, man, you find me. And you don't even really, I, you know, I think you can actually probably just do it without the hyphens now. There yeah. was a point where if you didn't use the hyphen, but now like, I think my at is used enough at this point. That like if you just you know if you, if you fuck it up I'll probably still show up. You're gonna find them. You're gonna find them. And my man has released some incredible music. The last couple of years has been extremely busy, and I'm so proud to say I've had a first row seat watching his growth, watching his development. Uh, he is a hip hop artist to the core. As he mentioned, no BS, no filler. He has something for everyone. I've told him he's a chameleon. He can rap on any beat. I haven't seen a beat that he can't rap on that shows a true artist. And, uh, man, he's my brother. So I am so happy to have him back for season four. Uh, we have uh, Unknown Comic Book Podcast, which is back for season two right now. streaming available on all platforms. And, of course, we got hip-hop. So that's what we're here to talk about, man. Let's talk about the new single, It's a Party. Featuring Bizarre from D12 fame. Super fantastic song. Going very well. Uh, tell us a little bit about this song because I know it's been a while in the oh, making man. to get it from creation to release. So, man, tell us about the story, man. Tell us a little bit about how this song came together. Well, I mean, you you asked me to talk about where I'm from and, and how I got into rap and everything. That's and right. this is all, uh, that actually ties into this this particular project very much perfect this particular project has kind of been along for the ride if you will because this was actually one of the first songs i started working on with rob when i you know when i met my producer uh cortex five years ago also cortex aka NYBD, not yo baby. You need that is. Shout out to NYBD. Also on the artist. Some bangers coming. We'll, right have now. Here. we'll have them here very soon. Yeah, you got to get them in here. This song's called Sanctified. We'll help you Check it out. Okay. We got a banging video. My boy is really coming with some like some different type sound that I like. I'd never even actually expected from him, man, because he's just. He's, he's doing some rock star shit. You know what I mean? 
And this is the guy that makes like all my quintessential hip hop beats. You know what I mean? Like he's the guy that like, you know, I hope when I blow up and I'm playing Madison Square Garden, he's on stage DJing and shit, you know? Um, yeah, you guys got to check out NYBD. But so, you know, I come from I come from middle of nowhere, Blairsville, Pennsylvania. Lovely little small town. Shouts to Blairsville. Shouts to all my, my hometown friends. And, um, you know, really uh, being able to even, you know, like just to say that I've released rap music, it is is uh, that alone feels like a major accomplishment. No, it most definitely is. <laughs> that I'm in, that I'm in the, the city. And even the, the day job I'm working feels like a major accomplishment because it's nothing that I imagined myself ever doing. And I won't get too heavily into that because I don't want to, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to cross pollinate brands or something. You know what I mean? That That is a very important branding venture. And, yeah. and what I got going on here is a very, uh, another very specific niche branding venture, if you will. So. <laughs> but I will say that I'm proud of my day job and and La Russell I like what La Russell said something about like you know people like to complain about their day job and stuff like that and he's like you're an independent artist treat your label like your day job or treat your day job like your, like, like your label there you go exactly and so you see, see, see I'm already trying to say he's shit and I'm fucking it up because I'm a stoner and stuff no, hey. he's, he's a genius man because that's a good mindset to have Really, you know, a lot of this shit is about mindset. But I digress. You know, I moved out of here. I mean, I, I, I lived in Philly. I was an actor for like 10 years. And then I moved out to, to, to Brooklyn to try to like, you know, do the New York City acting scene. But I wasn't really like, you know, I was going to like the, the open calls for all the the. the Broadway shows and shit like that and all the regional theater stuff that I used to do when I was in Philly, but I just wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't really doing the stage so much anymore because I just made Shithead. Like we just got done working on Shithead, my movie, check it out. It, it just, it actually just, uh, you can get it if you're Apple Plus. It's on Apple Plus. Okay, okay. So it's, you know, you can stream it for free if you've got Apple Plus. You gotta buy it on Amazon, but Apple, it's like a, you know, Apple Plus movie, I guess. Check it out, bro, shithead. Then uh, uh, you can watch it on Tubi for free with ads. But anyways, I was like, I wanna do more movie shit, you know? So that's the stuff I was trying to get into when I came out here. But, you know, I just, I, I fell on hard times. I almost, <laughs> I almost ended up homeless. Thank God I didn't, but it was it was definitely like the the, the dark times for Johnny Depp, and I feel like if I, I survived that and bounce back, you know, there's 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 no telling, <laughs> there's no yeah. telling what the universe can do for you if you're open to it, and that's the thing, man. I was just like walking around Brooklyn, writing bars in my head, like swapping at dive bars because I was depressed like there's you know what I mean and that was that's what I was doing and I never even like had a plan for these rocks like I've been writing rhymes all along and doing nothing with them you know I had some ideas of like some like you know rap stuff that I could do but never really had the outlet for it you know and uh I randomly met Vortex at a bar and you know, I, I I showed him what I could do, and he was like, "You're a whole MC, bro." And so, you know, it, it, I wouldn't have been able to get started for him. So again, shouts to Cortex, both out there, Nacho Baby Daddy, and so you know, we started recording, and very shortly after, I think this was maybe like the third, one of the, the third or fourth song, like it's one of those like first ten tracks we recorded was this song and there was an open second verse and he was like this song sounds like it needs a little bizarre on it you remember bizarre from d12 and i'm like yeah i love d12 man this is and, and i think you're right actually and i didn't realize that he actually like 
had a plan. Like, Vortex moves very mysterious. You know what I mean? So, like, he will say something and you think it's like, you know, you think he might be speaking in riddles, but then, like, a week later, he comes up and he has this track with fucking Bizarro. And I'm like, okay, like, how'd you do that? And he's, you know, he's friends with, you know, somebody in Bizarro's management or something of that nature. Um, and, uh, then I, I immediately hated all my shit on the song because Bizarre's, Bizarre's verse was so fucking good. <laughs> my favorite line, she wants to get with a shower cap on. I was like, I love it. And before that, I was like, back then I was still, uh, I, I had kind of rebranded before I became Johnny Raps. I was, I was, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 Yeah, Jesus. And I never I never released, I, I mean, I don't know. I put out like maybe two songs as Jesus at the beginning. It was just, also, it was like Jesus slash Johnny Raps. Like I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if I still wanted to do the the the, the, the goofy white Jesus thing because I didn't want to paint myself into a box. Right. right. Um, so that song was very heavy on that and I just didn't want, I, 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 I didn't like it. <laughs> I loved bizarre stuff and and didn't really like anything else about it. I wasn't like I wasn't really fully really into the production. No, okay. you know, no offense to Cortex, but I didn't feel like it was one of our stronger jams at the time. But I, that was because I wasn't giving it the flavor it needed, really. And so, fast forward to four years later, I've been dropping shit. I've been dropping shit. I've been trying to push it. I'm not a marketing expert. I'm not a business expert. These are the things that I need to learn. The artistry, we got that. That's in the bag. You know, I, I got shit in the chamber. You know I got shit in the chamber because you heard a lot of the shit, bro. Like, you know, I can it, brother. I could just drop shit for days, you know what I mean? But we gotta be tactical. At this point, we gotta be tactical about it. So, you know, I dropped, as you know, since since I've been on the show last, I'm pretty sure I dropped. Well, because the last thing we talked about was education. So projects, at least. Yeah. So since then, I've dropped three projects. Three projects. I've dropped uh, my, my, my full length album, Part Time Rapper. Time Rapper. Everybody should check out. That is a vibe. Big vibe. I actually think I think that anybody that is into hip hop will like, uh, or anybody that's into rap or like you know fun music, upbeat, want to dance type shit. That I don't know how you would describe it. What do you think, Morris? How would you describe the part time rapper album? Part time rapper to me is your. If I had to compare it to a hip hop classic, I would say it's somewhere in between um, when Nas went from. Hip- from Illmatic to like where he's kind of blew up and had a little gloss to it, but it's still hip hop. It's still 100% hip hop. But if you took Johnny Raps, you shined him up real nice, and you said, this guy can be a superstar, that's part-time rapper. That's the mm-hmm. album that I can hear on soundtracks, I can hear on a movie, I can hear, it really has radio friendly hits with all the rawness. So that's really, you know, you do a cleaned up version of it, I think that is your your thriller where you can cross lines and you're, you're not only in disco anymore. Now you're like, oh shit, this is getting played on MTV. Oh shit, this is getting played. So that's why I, if I had to compare it, I'm saying it's your leap from Illmatic to where you're like, okay, I got some some, some quality production. I've got some I mean, production's always dope. The bar is always dope, but it's definitely more elevated. Where I can see this as something that while wow, something a project like Education, completely underground. That's raw. Yeah, that's yeah. a classic, no doubt. But it's completely raw, completely recorded. Like, yeah, wow. yeah. And then part that's, down- the, that's the thing. We I actually used the same promotional tool on uh you know on spotify i'm not going to share all my tricks but there i found a pretty cool marketing tool for spotify spotify that i felt was good and organic and you know not not bullshit and uh me and 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 me cortex both using it and i ran time clock 
from the first track from a uh, part-time rapper. And then I ran, the next month I ran education. And I did it in isolated, I didn't run them both at the same time, I did it isolated ways so I could see how they both, they each performed and how that translated into people listening to my other stuff and everything. And like, I mean, education, I mean, time clock, time clock, vastly outperformed education. It got put on, you know, it got ended up on a lot more like playlists and stuff like that. And uh, I told Cortex and he was just like, that's that, that that's that raw hip hop shit, bro. <laughs> He's like, that's all that means. You know what I mean? That's that raw. And not everybody, not everybody can handle it. You know what I mean? But uh, I do agree with what you're saying about part-time rapper. And actually, so so if people know what, what the release plan is. Uh, well, we did part-time rapper. I came out with the EP Face Fucker as a follow-up, <laughs> which is probably, you know, one of my friends told me that it was, you know, by, by far my most vulgar and offensive. <laughs> Fair enough. And, uh, you know, it's it's to me, it's my my ode to the juggalos, really, um, because I, you know, the big thing that got me into this whole hip hop shit was insane clown posse. Um, that's one of the things that attracted me was just the the, the the authentic, the authentic nature of what they were trying to do. Um, so I, I think I'm like just kind of like I'm I'm kind of like settling i've always tried to be as authentic as possible and, and I, my whole you know the whole theme of part-time rapper is authenticity it's like you know like i, I you know as much as i want to be a full-time rapper i gotta have a full-time job you know what i mean so it's like you know, it, it's, i've always played on that reality of it right I, I feel like within you know within just being johnny raps within just be a rapper i've just i've settled yeah, into you that, that that I don't feel like I have, have to even try to be authentic anymore. I just I agree because I've done enough. And so, anyways, Face Fucker came out, and then we didn't drop anything since last September, except for like a couple videos. Since right. Face Fucker thing, I came out with a couple videos, and uh, and then we put out It's a Party, and It's a Party within its first week outperformed <laughs> anything I ever put out. Um, streams have slowed down on Spotify a little bit just because, um, you know, the, the, the hike was mainly due to me ending up on, uh, the release radar, uh, Spotify curates, curates this playlist, uh, release radar. So if you follow an artist, when they come out with a new song, it shows up on release radar. So this is the tactic working off of, you know, trying to work off that D12 cloud at work because, you know, anybody that followed Bizarre ended up seeing It's a Party on their release radar and, you know, ended up getting like you know, 40,000 streams almost from it. So that was dope. Uh, the streams have slowed down a little bit <laughs> since this release radar only lasts for a week, but um, the clean version should be dropping any minute now. Uh, the clean version got delayed for what reason, I don't know, but it, it should be dropping in a minute now. And, and so I'm interested to see, you know, if that does anything. Um, so that's going to come out and then we'll drop the video, but I'm not dropping a video until that's out. I'm like, kind of like okay. holding on the video for right now. I mean, mm -hmm. I want to make a couple fixes to it. Uh, and then I got another single coming. It's going to come in July. Uh, big old butt. So we put out big old butt, and then I'm sure by the time that comes out, I'll have some type of visuals together, and then we'll drop the visuals, the big old butt, and then I'm hoping also within the summertime to release the clean version of Part Time Rapper, like you said, because what I've learned is that it's it's you need clean shit to be able to. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, rappers, young rappers that are stubborn like me, and you know, hate fucking clean edits. <laughs> I fucking hate clean edits, bro. I can't even listen to them, bro. 
when I, growing up, bro, like I I don't know if you remember when Walmart only sold the clean version, and they didn't really tell anybody. And I remember buying a TI album and putting it in my radio and literally taking it out the window because I couldn't listen to it. I, I just had to throw it out the window. I think it's so destructive to the artist, but it is a music business. So as Rap said, there should be a couple of mixes you make when you make a song. Your raw, authentic version that you love, you need to have a clean version. You need to have a radio edit version. And you need to have, you know, maybe a instrumental that you can always have at least those four. Um, so young artists out there in the music industry, that's what this show is all about. The Den Brings In Nightmares, the acronym, is giving these artists an opportunity to have a family and a community and network that really cares about them. That's not going to ask a penny from you to see you guys shine. If you guys shine like Johnny Raps, it helps my life. So, uh, yeah, you know, I agree with you. Clean versions fucking suck. Uh, we're 20 minutes in, so I can drop that first F bomb. But they are quintessential for making your music pop in the music business, to use the advertisers, to get on playlists, to get uh, placements, which is a very huge opportunity for you to make money, getting placements on soundtracks and things of that nature. Do your clean versions, ladies and gentlemen. I digress. But go ahead, Raps. But that's it, man. I mean, that's really you, you got to come with some clean content to be marketable. There we uh, go. That's all. That's yeah. all I have to say about that. So then, yeah, I'm going to try to get the, the clean edit of the, the full length album out this year, <laughs> over a year later. Um, hey, it's but, new to someone. It's all, uh, that's what I tell people. All your it, my shit's very my shit's very new to everybody, man. Very new to everybody. So I don't want to get too deep into the concept of the video because you're dropping it later. But tell me about the experience. You've done some phenomenal music videos. I have seen them all. Um, I can honestly say, and you guys know I don't cap here. I have no reason to cap. When it comes to the music video game. It's not to, I'm, I'm from the night where, you know, people spent half a million dollar labels had a half a million dollar budget for music videos, $3 million music videos, like Twiggy and, and, a, and a feed boat, a feed driving backwards. That shit doesn't exist anymore in the music industry. But somehow, somehow, my man Raps makes it and his team makes it seems like they have a half a million dollar budget. He doesn't make videos, he makes many movies. Tell me about the experience of making this video, meeting Bizarre, because I remember we talked about that and I was like, I don't know, but I sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. I was completely wrong on this one. Um, it, it, it's super dope, but tell me the importance and the significance of having that visual element, man. Because you come from the acting background, but I know Deep down inside, that kind of holds a special place in your heart. Tell me about making that video and the significance of, you know, still having that visual element. Well, yeah, I mean, this is, I kind of got, like, sidetracked with, with, the, with the, the coming of the song story, but, like, yeah, this, this, this ties, this, this brings us back around. And really, like I said, I, I didn't like my part of the song, It's Party, so I, and it wasn't even called It's a Party. It was called Glistening. Oh. Like I said, I was doing my Jesus thing. I, I, was, I don't think that bar is anywhere in the song. If I could <laughs> nope, nope. So I put that shit away, and uh, like a you know a, a month ago, I came in for a sesh, and we hadn't touched the song in forever. And I was just like, I was like, yo, like Bizarre's been dropping some new shit that I actually like really really like. Like his new stuff, folks, is worth checking out, man. It's fucking called I Got a Gun. He's got two new albums. I got a gun and I got a gun too. And they're with, you know, some fire producer that, that does like old school boom bap shit. And, you know, like it's just bizarre's just dropping rockers, man. And uh he you know, he's got and he's teaming up with some good people. He's got Nems on there, Young Z is on one track, you know what I mean? So there's there's a lot of uh, special treats in there for you, so I would check that. I would check that. My favorite song he's got right now is called Teen Songs. So, anyways, we actually like we actually sat there, me and Rob, 
before, I was like, I just want to, you know, I was like, Bizarre's doing all this new shit. I want to check it out, right? I want to I look at that song, see if I can clean it up. I always wanted to read my part. I got some ideas. So we pulled it out the chamber. We sat there. We actually watched a couple of Bizarre's new videos just to get the vibe. Because that's the thing is like some people, they have that energy that you just, you just want to, you just want to see the visual of them. You know what I mean? You want to see what the, what this character looks like, and and you know, Bizarre is definitely a character, Absolutely. even you know within his rhyme, very outlandish and stuff. And you know, that's some that's that's something that I've always we'll um, rocket. That that's an inspiration that I've always drawn from Bizarre. You know what I mean? I, like yeah. you know, like sometimes I would say some fucking crazy shit. And you know the instinct, the sometimes the gut instinct is to be like, "Well, oh, that's maybe a little bit too much." And then you know, but I think to myself, and I'll be like, "Well, would Bizarre from D12 say it was too much?" <laughs> what would Bizarre do? I think that needs to be a sticker. Yeah, so I thought that many times, right, in my shit over the years. You know, um, no, no cap, no cap at all. And I'll be like, you know, even if even if it was. Like maybe being too fucked up for Eminem to say, but Bizarre would still say it. So anyway, and I even paid homage over the years with the shower cap. I wore a shower cap in like two different yeah. videos. I'm about to say I've seen it, and I think on one of the covers of what are your singles? You're, you're in the shower. You're maybe your third or fourth single. You're in the shower cap. Girls in the video. Yeah, bro. That's a part-time rapper video, man. So it's like, yeah. I've always been inspired by him in one way or another. Especially like his appearance in, in all the D12 videos and stuff, the energy. Uh, so, yeah, bro. I, I, I went to the studio. We didn't have a plan. We fucking re-recorded all of my shit. We did It's a Party. And then, just like, it, this shit just like manifested itself, bro. The very next week, he was in town promoting his shit. Like I was like, I was on my, tr on the train on the way to work. It was a Wednesday morning. I was on the train on my way to work and Cortex hit me up and he was just like, so bizarre's in town. Dot, dot, dot. And I was like, are you fucking serious? And I was like, is, is, is a video even possible? And he was like, let me find out. And so, you know, he got, you know, got a time, got a quote. You know, I, I hit up a couple of homies, was like, should I do this? Because, I mean, it definitely, I took a hit, you know what I mean? Right. I took a hit on, I took a hit on the budget for this one. Uh, but, we'll have you like, rocket. even alone, the experience was worth it. Just to, just to oh, you know, work with somebody of that caliber and, you know, just, just feel like, like he, you know, he totally made me feel like I was on his level, you know what I mean? He was into the song. Yeah, I can tell he was into the song. He showed up delivery of what he gave to the project. You know, sometimes when you're working out with these artists that are, you know, D12 has had two number one albums, if I'm not mistaken. You know, he's a hip hop legend. Uh, that, that's not a doubt. So sometimes they give you, they don't really, for the newer artists or the more underground artists, they don't give them that level that they would give but if you listen to his bars on the track he delivered it perfectly it it, 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 it was a marriage made in heaven so man shout yeah, out I had to redo my shit years later man because I, right. I wasn't on par yet bro i mean at that point when we reported I, I hadn't even we hadn't even found our signature sound right me and cortex like you know of course now we we can we know what a Johnny rap song is, bro. Yeah, what a rap song is, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, I can go in the, in, in the studio and start spitting bars, and, and Cortex is automatically crafting some beat that sounds like a... Brah, brah, brah. <laughs> like, like, Johnny Rap's John, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, <clears throat> yeah, man, I, I, we fucking... We had, like, an hour... He had, like, an hour to shoot the video before he, like, went to go catch his his plane on like a Saturday. Like we, you know, we had, we, we shot in his fucking hotel room, you know, because it was all spur of the moment. I got my best, I got my best fucking, you know, gorilla style videographer in Fatane, uh, 
you know, the founder of Infotainment, Timeless Masterpiece, brand you recognize if you've ever fucking entered, if you've ever commuted, and you take the New Jersey Transit and get out of Madison Square Garden in New York City at uh, fucking, what is it, 8th Avenue and 31st Street. If you get off of 8th and 31st, my dude is out there with his merch booths like twice a week. You have met him because he comes right up and talks to you, bro. And this is how I met him, bro. And he, the, the fun thing is, bro, he's he's like best friends with Aflo. Like, they grew up together and shit. That's crazy. Small world, right? <laughs> you know, after, like, I talked to him, like, three, four times, and we found that out. Well, he shot he shot the education video, and I was rather impressed with that. Yeah, like, how, no how well he was going to do the stuff. Um, people that know me mo know most of my videos have been made uh, by the director of that movie, Shithead, Mike Morelli. He's a fucking, you know, cinematic genius, especially with you know innovative uh, technology he's he's what he does at most is just fucking phenomenal so he'll direct his own shit but he also edits which you have you know what i mean and, art and form. two different art forms man. he makes shit look crazy bro beautiful um and sidebar we're getting ready to work on a shithead cartoon brother. just about to touch on that i was just about to touch on that uh what can you tell us? I, I know it's uh, it's early on in development, but tell man, I I'm super stoked for this. Tell us a little bit about this cartoon. I know you're going to be reuniting with some of the original cast. Uh, give us a little a little little glimpse uh, or a little glimpse of what we can expect with that. Well, actually, <laughs> I don't. I mean, to be honest, I don't know how much of the original cast is going to be involved. I okay. think I think I mean that's not. That's not me to decide, but from what the treatments that we discussed, we're going to, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a different setting. You know, Jordan is still the main character, but it's the, 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 the story of the plot of the movie will be retold in a different setting and, and with you know a lot more detail because that's i think that's going to be like the first season it's like the, the beginning of the story right so that's that'll probably be like a retelling of kind of what happens in the movie to some degree we're definitely going to have face fucker, so i'll be doing that but you know just like a lot of these uh, i think like adult swim type cartoons like we're we're going to be probably working with like a few voices Okay. You know, like I imagine, I imagine even Mike might do some voices because he he does some pretty like funny voice shit, uh, just like fucking around and stuff. Uh, so if I can convince him to do some voices, we'll do that. But I think I'm gonna do a majority of the voices. Okay. Uh, you know, there's he's gonna have a different different kind of baby mama <laughs> than Janae. Uh, uh, there's you know, uh, we got ideas for characters like inspired by, by you know people that i work with we really want to like i haven't really talked to him about it but we really want to get that dude mars the rapper mars m-a-r-s no um, in francisco uh yeah we did or pittsburgh pa rather pittsburgh california rather <laughs> I'm from pittsburgh, PA. pittsburgh california rather uh yeah we I would like I can kick, kick around some ideas about like you know making him a character and stuff because he was so funny when we worked with him on the I Got a Butcher Knife video. Um, you know that might be a pipe dream, but <laughs> it's something that we kicked around. Um, and yeah, we have we have ideas for like a whole lot of new characters and stuff like that. But it's really just you know I mean it's he's got to the, the sky is the limit with a cartoon right because. He, he got into a lot of crazy shit in the movie. But think right. of all the insane shit that we could, like, we're going to have him go to war. And, and, no matter what you can do in and all kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? He's going to he's gonna be, like, you know, involved in a whole, whole Chenko cartel situation. Like, just all, whatever kind of crazy nonsense you can think of. You need a Chinko kingpin, you know, I, I 
legend has it. I have a, some legendary baritone pipe, so I, I'm down for anything <laughs> you guys want to do. Anything you want to do. So, oh, yeah, bro. this season on Down in the Den, um, we have a theme. We have a theme every season, but this season, uh, it's all about AI music. As a creator myself, as a producer myself, as a creative myself, as a former artist myself when it comes to music, and as a current artist for yourself, the shit is kind of scary, but it's also kind of amazing what's going on so quickly. Have you had an opportunity to check out any of these AI music uh, songs that have been available on YouTube? Drayton uh, had a whole AI album release that had nothing to do with him. Um, there's a smash song with AI in the weekend, uh, AI in the weekend, Drake in the weekend. That has nothing to do with either of them. Uh, my personal favorite, I don't know if you've seen the Super Mario Brothers movie, but we all know, shout out to Jack Black, the Peaches song, which is an earworm. They've done a, and I'll send you the link if you haven't seen it, they've done a Michael Jackson AI Peaches that is fucking phenomenal. <laughs> oh my God. Fucking phenomenal. So it, it, it brought piggybacks, Tupac back. Um, literally, I knew this was coming when, if you guys are Star Wars fans like me, if you watch the Obi-Wan uh, and you know this Darth Vader, and you're like, damn, James Earl Jones is like 95, and he sounds amazing. And then you realize he never stepped on the set. He never recorded any audio whatsoever. He sold his rights, his voice to Disney so they can have authentic Darth Vader until our grandkids are dead. So, what the fuck do you think about that? Is this something that you know, we're, we as artists or the creatives, we're just going to pretty much sign our, our rights away, get a check for the rest of our lives and let labels and companies use our images? Or is it something that, that you know, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube once it's squeezed out? Or is there always going to be a place for true, authentic producers and artists, man. What say you on that? Oh, I think, yeah, I think, I mean, a AI is just mimicking what it's researched, really. Right. You know what I mean? It, 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 you know, it knows whatever is in its database, right? Right. So it's, it's mimicking what it thinks life is and, and things that it's mimicking whatever you tell it to mimic, really, right? Right. Yeah. So I think, you know, we'll you it, it can be concerning, uh, but I also think, you know, the consumer, uh, right now, I mean, right now there's, there's an issue in the music industry with authenticity. Mm -hmm. There's, there's an issue with oversaturation. Um, it seems to me almost like not only, I mean, I'm very much steeped in the artist world, which is, which is, you know, part of my problem is I need to connect more with my community in order to, to, to really, really find the Johnny Rapp stand base. I think that's the, that's the, the, the big next big step in the mission that I'm on really probably should have been my mission all along, but you know, I'm just, I'm just naturally inclined to create and I'm not naturally inclined to do any of this other shit. So I'm right. really learning as I go and really, you know, also learning how to you know, be disciplined and hold myself accountable and do the shit that I hate fucking doing, right. which is, you know, the, the but it, you end, you eventually end up finding the fun in it. You believe in yourself. Like now, I, I wouldn't feel bad selling, pushing a piece of Johnny Rapp's merch on somebody because I, I, I think my shit is cool. Right. <laughs> where, where you know, imposter syndrome is a real, real thing. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, especially where I come from, and and you know, <laughs> how how. Okay. I mean, I can definitely feel like, like culturally, like I don't belong in some of these places that I step into and in some of these stages that I step into. I always end up shining because I, I am authentically myself and I, and I do a good job at what I'm doing too. But imposter syndrome is a real thing for all artists. And, uh, you know, so 
that was definitely something that I had to overcome. And I think it's, I don't think it goes away. I don't think it goes away. It's always there lingering. So even as a businessman, as a, as a salesman, you know what I mean? That's also, there's also some imposter syndrome in there that I'm working to overcome. You know, building a fan base. Like, like okay, I got to really like, <laughs> I got to believe in myself more than these people do. Absolutely. So, I always say no one said Lil Wayne was the best rapper alive until Lil Wayne said he was the best rapper alive. You have to actually believe everything you say, even if you don't have the confidence that it's true and you have that self-doubt, that inkling of self-doubt, which we all do. We all suffer from imposter syndrome. We all, be it with our partners, be it with our job, be it with our career, be it with our passion. Sometimes we have that inkling of self-doubt, but I can let you know, man, as hip hop since 88, as I like to say, since I was really a child and loving hip hop and like literally having it forced upon me by a brother that was 10 years older. So like, hey, you're going to listen to Too Short when I wanted to listen to maybe Barney. They were like, nah, you're going to listen to NWA. You're going to listen to this. You're going to listen to Public Enemy and so grateful that he put that on me, I can honestly say, brother, there's no place in hip hop that you're an imposter. There's a lot of artists out here that are selling millions of records and I can assure you should be suffering from, uh, you know, imposter syndrome. You And I've interviewed some, you are not one of them. So uh, you know, that's for the heart, brother. There's no place Thank in hip hop. Thank that you for that. And that's yeah. the thing is it's like, well, you know, I, I, I believe I'm, I'm, I believe I'm that, uh, that authentic, authentic thing that, um, that people are going to be looking for. You know, we have had a very, very long period of bullshit. Mm. You know, it's, okay. they, they say that the new talent is no talent. And, but I don't think that's, that's not a new thing. That's just, that's basically how it's been kind of like, I don't know, let's say the last however many years, right? It's a music business. It's about who a uh, label feels. Think about it. Jay-Z got turned down by every label. That's why they had to create Rockefeller. And now many people hear of him as a top five MC. Some will say great at time. So it, it, it really doesn't matter what the label says. It's about you putting in that work and really bringing out great product, which you've done so far. Yeah. Yeah. I forget. What, what, was, the, what, what the fuck was the last thing I said, man? Uh, you were just talking about, you know, imposter syndrome. And I valley lose my house. I was talking about how like, the last couple, the last however many years, it's just been bullshit music, right? Bingo. <laughs> And, and, you know, just a lot of clones and stuff. I mean, there's some original stuff in there, man. I, I really, I, just, I can't lie. I fucking love Megan Stallion. I, she's got bars. Her songs are dope, you know? Um, yeah. See, a lot of the new artists, newer artists that I like are like, are the, are the lady rappers. You know, I really like Rico Nasty, um, OG, people like that. So, but uh, all that is to say that there's something called, the 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 Sekhmet hypothesis. Okay. S e k h m e t, I believe. And I forget what ancient culture uh, came up with this, but if you look it up, it's basically, um, it's basically culture, pop culture, what people are into shifts every so many cycles basically every like you know 10 15 years what pop culture is like shifts on its head and it basically goes and this is this is as explained by grant morrison the comic book writer my favorite comic book writer who we'll probably talk about a million times in our other show but he he talks about this and you know Basically, his example is the beginning of superhero movies to where they are kind of now. So when the super movies started to really pop off there in the late 90s, early 2000s, 
um, even movies that were just not even not even really actual comic book movies, but based, but just kind of inspired. Like The Matrix wasn't actually a comic book, but it has all the trappings of a comic book. Absolutely. And, and so you know, it, and but the, 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 it was all the same style, right? It was still it was still dark. It was still gothic. It was still you know Tim Burton Batman ish. You know. Right. X Men came, and they instead of having the 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 blue the bright costumes that they always had in the comics, <laughs> you know, Brian Singer was like, "Fuck it, they got black leather." You know what I mean? And uh, you know, so so that was kind of the the feel of the movies around that time. Even think about the '90s movies and like Goodfellas, Reservoir Ball, shit like that. Shit was raw, bro. Shit was oh yeah, raw. Was raw. And oh, then. We go into like the late 2000s or whatever, and everything is so shiny, bro. Like you go from like these hardcore like like rappers that like you know like you Red Man fucking you know I don't showing off his box of dollars at in MTV cribs and shit like that was the raw shit, bro. Right. And then you know you, and you it, that was a brilliant episode, cribs, because if you see that you see the shift almost happening, you see the. Yeah position because then the next thing you know they're like you know 50 cents in the D unit compound with all the, the the cars that they probably like rented out or whatever and li little wayne showing around his mansion but he ain't got no furniture in it yet <laughs> like, like, it, but they're, they're they're like striving for that shiny that like to me what i think is fake i mean they're probably like you know like oh my chain i this represents this, that, the third, you know, but you know, it's it's to me. It represents Tony Stark. You got Iron Man now, being shiny, right? Being shiny, everything shiny. All the all the 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 hit movies are glossy and, and bigger than life and and beautiful and shiny. And that's why that's why you know it's kind of like Z Zack Snyder's uh, Zack Snyder's DC stuff. It's almost pushing against that, which I think is why why uh, that's why people find it problematic. You know what I mean? Like his his Justice League was dark. Yeah, people are dark. In some ways, darker than what a lot of people wanted. True fans wanted that that real raw feel. You know what I mean? Right. The industry, what the industry wants, and what the industry thinks people want, was that like that first glossy one. Right. <laughs> so that's the segment hypothesis and i actually think based off of how how much the the entertainment industry has fucked things up with streaming and and oversaturation and bullshit stuff bullshit content i think consumer is roundabout at the point where they're saying fuck this everything is an app now and you know like you know, where before it was like you could have free apps and and see everything. Now everybody, every TV station is just like, well, okay, you don't want to have cable anymore. We're gonna make an app. Fuck you. And it's like, right. well, fuck you. I'm not gonna pay it's months a month for every station. Right. Right. Well, right. people are already tired of that bullshit. Uh, you know people are just tired of that bullshit and then and then the artists are tired of the bullshit because we're not going to make any money off the streamings right so it's right. and there's really no way to quantify bro like watching those watching those numbers for it's a party was fucking goddamn ridiculous bro yeah and, like i would wake up every morning and it would be at least a couple thousand less streams than it told me what it was the night before the YouTube. Well, right. I, I am never going to be able to quantify what what I've actually done on any of those platforms because they, you know, they mess with the numbers. And I, I and you know, I, what I read, and I don't know how legit this is, but I, I read that like uh, independent artists are only allowed to get like three thousand streams a day on Spotify or something. That is actually true. That is actually true because once again. It's a business, so a lot of times, and we may be playing a little inside baseball, but I have a lot of experience in the, you know, the business side of the industry and what raps is saying. Absolutely true. When you see these people, a billion dollar stream, a billion streams, trust me, 
I know payola is illegal, but it's not illegal. It's literally record labels pushing to put certain artists on certain playlists. So being an independent artist is truly a grind. And that's why I always say you have to have your community. Because if you don't have a label pushing you, you're not going to get a billion streams. It doesn't matter how incredible the song is. It doesn't matter the budget. It doesn't matter how much artwork you put in. If you don't have those dollars behind it, it's not going to get a billion streams. But what you can do is build that community that will come and buy your Johnny Raps merch and come to a Johnny Raps show and support a Johnny Raps project that's on something where they want to be the first and exclusive. So that's why I always say if you're an artist, number one, make sure your artistry is up to snuff uh, because it, nothing matters if it's not up to snuff. If it's not up to quality, if you don't have good mix, if you don't have good sound, it doesn't matter. If your content isn't good, it doesn't matter who's behind it. Secondly, you have to build your community. Be there for your community communicate with the community, let them know what projects you have on. And they, if, hate the quote of Kevin Costner line, but if you build it, they will come. So at the end of the day, building that community is essential if you're going to go the independent route. Now, if you want to sign you know, your ass over to a big label, you're going to get the strings, but you're still not going to see the dollars because you're only getting a percentage. It takes a million strings to get $3,500. So, you know, you can make that at McDonald's. The music business, if you don't have the passion, the heart for it, I think Rick Ross just said it took him 10 years before he ever seen a dollar for music. His stuff came from the other things to show the uh, other things. So you got to have the passion for it because it's a long, hard, and arduous road, but you can make it if you take some of those tips, those 10 craft commandments that I just mentioned. You, you can get there, brother. I think you're well on your way. You're well on your way for sure. Thanks, bro. I, I appreciate the encouragement, man. Like I said, I'm, I'm right now. I'm building. I'm building that community. That's that's the focus. You know, the focus is, you know, building that community, getting some merch out there, making some hard sales, um, <laughs> taking a page out of Russell's book, taking a page out of this guy's book, taking a page out of that guy's book, and making my own book. So that's that's where we're on. We're on to the next chapter, and it is a long and arduous journey. Um, but I, I, you know, I listen to your experts, guys. Like you know, anybody that's like me, you know, uh, trying to do the damn thing without selling their soul <laughs> and all that. Um, trying to keep it real. Just like listen to those people when you get discouraged, man. You gotta listen to like like Ice Cube said. You know, he's like he said something very similar. He, like you know. You, if you're not willing to put in at least five years into your brand without seeing any money back, five years into your business without seeing any money back, like, you're not, nothing's going to happen. People expect to be back. That, that was somehow I just got a text from my mom and, and <laughs> telling me dinner's at four. Thanks, mom. Shout out to <laughs> mama. Ooh, she's, dinner's dinner's at four. Yeah, you didn't miss that meal. I don't want that smoke at all. It's not many people I fear, but that's one of them. But yeah, man, you got to put the and that's the thing. It's like I feel good. I feel like I've put the grind in, and yeah. and uh, right now about the time I should be manifesting some shit. And it seems like something's working, man. It's party. Seems like something's working. I'm just gonna keep going. I think that's a perfect place to, to, to wrap it up. Absolutely, man. Perseverance. And uh, like I said, if you ever need... But fuck this AI shit, bro. I do want to say... Uh, yeah, I want to say... You, I, I said all that shit about authenticity in the Sekhmet theory to say that I think people are coming back around to wanting to see the gritty, the raw, the real, the authentic... Uh, because they, they get tired of the same thing after a while, and eventually they'll get tired of that, and they'll want everything to be superficial and pretty again. Right. Uh, but you know, you, you're. I think you're gonna. We're already seeing more like real people, real looking type people in movies and stuff. People that aren't like, you know, like Hollywood beautiful, but just kind of like actual beautiful. Um, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, people so, are just a little bit more real, and so. You know, as AI mimics real life, I think we're all people are gonna want you know to 
that that you know the, the, the Darth Vader voice wouldn't matter at all if James Earl Jones didn't do it first. And so you know I don't know how well AI is going to work at coming up with new stars because you know the AI rapper that kind of like started to take off but then immediately plummeted because it was it was so such a like offensive stereotype like you know nobody could connect to that person nobody could connect to that character the reason why people like music is because they they connect to the artist it doesn't even well, half the time it doesn't even have to do with the music itself as much you know if you gotta have good music you gotta be good at what you're doing but they want to they want to know that you're you know that, that, that people don't follow you unless they're interested in you facts facts and who's interested in in algorithm and zero ones and binary code right. no one and I think you touched on something there. The only reason some of the AI music or art that has come out is successful is because it's emulating someone that we missed. Uh, we never got to hear Biggie work with Kanye. We never got to hear some of these things. So when we see these remakes, it's a glimpse of, damn, this, this is an alternate universe. This is a multiverse that we missed that right now we could have had Biggie rapping like Nas or something like that. We never got it. We were robbed from it. Uh, we don't have Michael anymore. We don't have some of these artists. Um, so if you don't have what was already created by real soul to emulate, then you have nothing. And I think what will ultimately happen, and they've been talking about this in movies, we saw a little bit, you know, if, for those who saw The Flash, and we'll talk about that, you know, later on on UCP, um, where they had some cameos that some people thought were distasteful, some people thought it was dope. If you don't have that human element first to even imitate, it doesn't matter. As far as something original, creative, AI really can't do that. They can only emulate as close as possible to the human experience that we've already created, which I do believe whatever you believe religiously is divine. I believe creation is divine. Because uh, that's why I always say, you know, you can throw away the creator, but you can't throw away the creation. Because when you you know, as a rapper, when you really think about that, when bars that you hear some music, you hear a beat and it inspires you, where does that come from? When you really think about it, like, it seems like it's just coming, it's like a, a download almost, it's like mm -hmm. something you can download it into your head. Mm -hmm. that, the thing that I don't think AI can capture is like there's some type of divine interpretation that comes down, you know, regardless of what you believe that uploads into our head. Um, rhyme patterns, rhyme structures, that comes out of nowhere. But we all know nothing comes out of nowhere. So until they can up really comp really copy the source code, and I call the source code like creation, divineness, whatever. I AI there you go. It's just going to be a, 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 a cheap imitation. So I love that, dude, bro. I love it. So we're about to wrap up, man. Please let the people know. Four-time guests. First four-time guests. And I hope it's 40 more times. Uh, please tell the people where they can find you. Can you drop my handle, bro? Can you drop my handle with the at Johnny Raps? I got you right now. Hold no hyphens. So this is my rap name right here. John hyphen E hyphen raps. Look me up. Go to YouTube. Watch my videos. We got that bizarre video dropping soon, sometime this month. Wait, take take the hyphens out though. Take the hyphens oh, out. I got you. Watch this. Watch this. I got you. I love this new platform. There we go. Come on. Look at That's that. That's my handle. Look me up. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, follow me on TikTok, but I don't really feel using TikTok that much. But I, I should. I'm going to try. And then uh, YouTube. What else? Just, just uh, listen. Is just there listen. Twitter? Yeah, Twitter. There's Twitter. It's rap. Man. It's rap. So you like hip hop? Just whatever, man. Watch my movie shithead, bro. Go on me, Link Tree. It's in the it's link in the bio. All that, man. All that, all that. Love him, man. I love him. I love this guy like a brother. Uh, I, yeah, bro. Is it like? Is it a little bit different, like interviewing <laughs> interviewing the homie <laughs> than it is? Oh, like, the first time. 
when, when I turn this hat backwards, that's when I go into full Mars mode. He knows me as Sean, but uh, you know, he knows me by the government. But um, when I turn the hat on, man, I, I go into full journalistic mode. I turn to Walter Cronkite, man. You know, uh, so yeah. As soon, as soon as I turn off, I'm like, oh, bro, that is it, not. But you know, I, I, I go, I go into full. Well, I want because I want to give the people, I want to give the den mates and the friends uh, of the den what they want. They want more raw, authentic, talented artists like yourself. That's what I create. So I only rock with the real because it's a deficit in the industry right now. I said it on one of my freestyles. It's all about tick. You know, it's not about hip hop. It's all about TikTok. And uh, you know, ah, we don't, bars. We don't do that here. We do, bars. We, we do the real hip hop. And this guy inspired me to start freestyling the day and, and doing music again. So, uh, yeah, he's man. Better, he's, he's a good freestyle. See, I don't really freestyle, you know what I mean? I, and see, and that's why I think we're a perfect match because okay. you, one, one thing that I will give props to, and I say we were ending, but I, I want to touch on this. Songwriting is a different beast from being able to rap. And that's why you see a lot of underground artists that can rap, 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 but they can't put a hook together. They can't put a bridge together. They can't put a melody together. My man's classically trained. He knows how to do all of that and spit. So, you know, being it's just discipline. Some of it is being able to free yourself. I will say, I will say I was much better at freestyling before I started taking the writing serious. If that That's makes right. sense. No, like, that before I became Johnny Raps, I mean, like I said, there was always some element of of, of that existing within me, and I right. used to I used to get invited to jam band sessions in college because they'd be like, "Hey, we don't have like anybody singing or anything tonight, but if you want to come, like, you know, fuck around on the mic," was basically like what they would what they what they considered it to be, and right. I would just like go and I would I would freestyle, I would say some fun, like people would be laughing and stuff, and then I would like. You know, and then if I couldn't come up with anything, I just start with like doing like old dirty bastard shit. You know, oh, like, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I did all that, but I was like so much better at it when I didn't, you know, when I wasn't taking it seriously. There was no stakes, you right? Know what I mean? But there's there's two there's like two schools of thought about freestyle, right? There's okay. like, Two kinds of freestyle in my mind, um, and I've you know I've, I've heard others say this. There's there's freestyle, which is I think the, like the, the new the, the new conception, the newest conception of the of the word, the definition would be like off the dome, right? Like off the dome, you just came up with it on right. the spot. That's like that's when somebody like kick a freestyle. Like, right. You think of it that way, or the the original this is what KRS one says anyway so I'm just, uh, you know I th I think he, the teacher so if KRS one says it in hip hop I learned a lot of from like you know watching him talk wait it, there's also freestyle the original definition would be freestyle which is free of style right playing right. right. rhyme free of style meaning it doesn't have you know like in a, in a lot of songs there has to be a theme right something like that but you know, well, a lot of the stuff, even when somebody tells me to kick a freestyle, I mean, that shit's coming out of my notebook somewhere. Most There's not a whole lot of stuff that's just off the dome anymore, but, but probably because I've written so much anyways, why would I, well, if somebody wanted me to kick something fresh, why wouldn't I, why wouldn't I do something that's curated anyway? You know what yeah. I mean? Most legendary freestyles are written that we've heard. Um, I was just looking, uh, of course, my algorithm for some, hot, for some reason is on Diggy's last freestyle in 90, 1997. He went on a radio station in Los Angeles soon after Tupac had passed away and kicked the freestyle, which if you listen to it and you listen to Life After Death, is the long kiss goodnight. But it's free to us because we'd never heard it. It hadn't been structured on a song. And there's some lyrics in there that can be interpreted as, you know, anti-Tupac, which at the time in the midst of the East Coast, West Coast uh, war essentially may have led, you know, theories and led to his untimely demise. So most 
freestyles that we hear from some of our favorite artists or just songs they haven't released yet or a piece of this song and a piece of that song that they put on a beat that someone's playing. And then as rap said, there's off the top where you're literally pulling something out of nowhere. I've always been good at that because uh, my, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm talking like I'm an X-Man or something, but my mind, everything's moving a little bit slower to me. So I can think three bars ahead where I want to go with this and just kind of freestyle. But writing a song is where I'm learning, you know, because I, I never had that knowledge. I was just able to spit. And then you get to a point where, you know, you let this preconceived nation of hip hop is one man's game, blah, blah, blah. I don't believe any of that anymore. I believe hip hop is the best talent and the people. I want to see rappers like Bruce Springsteen going out at 75 years old. I don't know how old Bruce Springsteen is. I'm sorry if I offended you, Bruce. Uh, but going out at 75 years old and still rocking the house. People like Harris One, Big Daddy Kane are doing that. We see LL in his 50s. I think Dr. Dre is damn near 60. That's where we're at. And I'm so happy because it used to be once you got 25, you're still rapping. You're considered uh, antique. And now I think people are just getting their prime. Some of our favorite artists are 45 and up. So I love it for hip hop. I love it. I want to see rap. That's encouraging to do it to myself. Yes. Johnny Raps, a.k.a old dirty cracker i love it i love it i want to see him 80 years old with a walker and a pamper on just rocking a house of thirty thousand. like hey yo this is the shit no literally this is the shit i need my you're like pampers, man. you rap so fast that your, your your dentures fall out on stage then a girl throws them back like oh i love it thank you for the dentures that, no, that's when you run away they keep the dentures exactly is that I'm like, oh, I'm going to use this for later. Okay, that's for I, after dark. That's for after dark. I'm going too far. Oh, man. But Raps, thank you so much, brother, man. You know I love you like a fat kid loves cake, bro. I love you too, bro. Happy for your, for your success. Uh, straight to the moon for you, brother. Uh, please continue grinding, putting out those beats, putting out those, uh, those videos, putting out those songs, everything you do, putting out the artwork, shithead. The acting, I want it all for you, and I know it's going to happen. So, man, I love you, bro. Thank you so much again for giving your insight on AI music. So we're we're one for one this season. We got one person that says AI is the future. We got one person uh, that says AI is the grizzling shit. So I'm somewhere in between. So please let us know in the comments what you think, what you feel. That's the thing this year. I'm concerned. I'm a music head. I'm concerned for my artists. So please let us know. Is AI the shit? Is it great? Is it the future? Is it the drizzling shits? You let me know in the comments. AI is a tool. It's AI is a, a human tool. It's a tool. And anything that, uh, like any tool, it can be used to create, you know, or it can be used to destroy. If I take this hammer and build the house, I've created it. If I take a hammer and smack someone in the back of the kneecap with it, I can destroy them. So uh, it's how you use it at the end of the day. We've all seen The Matrix, folks. We've all seen The Matrix. The movies come true. <laughs> I feel like we're on the cusp of Terminator 2, bro, with all this AI, you know. But uh, that's it for us today, man. We thank you guys for tuning in. It's your boy Mars, a.k.a. Marlon Beardo, the Bearded Weirdo, a.k.a. the Stella Rosa casting over the curator of culture, the Great Wonder, with my man, John E. Raps. For another episode of Down in the Den. We know what you want to do. We want you to like, comment, subscribe. Share this. We're going to be putting it on all platforms now. So it's not only just going to be the audio. It's not only just going to be on YouTube. But we're now on Facebook. We're on Twitter now. We're giving you this content everywhere you can receive it. So please, check us out. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow my man, John E. Rap, to all his social media. If you got any questions for us, put it in the comments. We'll get back to you on the next episode. As I end every episode the same, it's all about peace, love, unity, and respect. Deuces. Now, so like, comment, subscribe. The show starting right now. Let's go. Like, comment, subscribe. The show starting right now.